Your Majesty, a little more than one year ago, I had the great honor and satisfaction of receiving you in your first state visit to Spain. A visit that we remember as specially fruitful in order to go into depth in the tight and fraternal friendship from Spain and Saudi Arabia. Today, I feel the happiness of addressing these words in this opening session of World's Conference for Dialogue, a conference that under your sponsorship as custodian of the two holy mosques and organized by the World's Muslim World League will be held during those days in Madrid. Welcome, Majesty, again to Spain. I repeat to you my best wishes of a happy stay in Madrid, and I welcome all the important personalities that have come from many other countries friend, who, that are our friends that have been invited by the organizers to participate in this meeting. We know, Your Majesty, how the importance that you attribute to this conference in Madrid, and we wish you a great success in your work. Spain has a known historical tradition as being a land, uh, a crossroad that is enriching both of cultures and religions, a country that has built its democracy around tolerance, living together, and mutual respect. Our active and permanent support to the peace process in Middle East, our support as well to the Euro-Mediterranean process and multiple bilateral initiatives and multilateral initiatives developed on Spanish behalf are included in this old tradition and renewed vocation. We have always been in favor of going into depth in peace, dialogue and cooperation at the international level. The World Conference for Dialogue has awakened an obvious interest. Dialogue from mutual respect to our own identities and beliefs has to be aimed to facilitate a better mutual knowledge to underline those values that we, on which we coincide and promoting collaboration and mutual understanding. In such a framework, the interreligious and intercultural dialogue is playing an outstanding role that is acquiring more importance in this era of globalization. We, we, we wish a better world, a world in peace that is more fair, more re wealthy and solidary, that allows the human being, the, our generations, the coming generations, to be de developed in dignity, harmony, and fullness. A world that ends forever with the terrible terrorist attacks that fights against hunger, disease, and poverty, that is respectful with human rights, and that promotes the defense of the environment. I trust that the distinguished personalities and experts that are attending this conference will know how to contribute with the best of their reflections following this direction. I repeat my friendly welcome to your majesty, my dear f brother, and all the participants with my best wishes of success in this World Conference for the Dialogue that is being opened today. Thank you very much. This conference in itself is considered as the victory of peace and moderation in the world. And it is another link to the service of mankind because if people take and hold different positions, this is overridden by the common values that all men have 
in all mankind and which is stressed by all the divine messages, which represents a platform to illustrate constructive ideas in order to deal with common issues for all mankind. Therefore, dialogue is considered as one of the essential means to convey these values because it is based on human nature, on reason, on mind, on the mind, which uh, can always be submitted to precepts. Let us not forget that all those who oppose a dialogue and cooperation between cultures and religions are those who wish the world to remain in chaos and discord. For only if the various cults fight between themselves can the weapons be sold. Only then can nations be subjugated. The imperialist has long ago realized that the best way to rule is to divide and the best way to divide is on the basis of beliefs and culture. Dr. Baba Jain, Secretary General, Millennium World Peace Summit of Religious and Civilizational Foundation presided over the first session surrounding the topic Dialogue and its Religious and Civilizational Foundation. Perhaps this is the most significant gathering in the world today. Why do I say in the world today? This conference is focused on dialogue, but significantly it has the patronage and the full support of one of the world's leading personalities, His, Ma His Majesty King Abdullah bin Aziz Al Saud. Never in history before has a major leader like His Majesty given such strong support to an initiative to bring together religious leaders for all the issues of dialogue. Now we have Rabbi Arthur Schoenier, founder and chairman of Conscious Foundation Corp. USA. He discussed about the dialogue in Judaism. In his speech, he stressed that we should commence building bridges among civilizations and reject injustice, violence, hatred, and fanaticism. I'm a Holocaust survivor. I experienced racism. I experienced ethnic cleansing. I experienced hunger, I experienced oppression, I experienced the suffering of my people. And in Vienna, I witnessed the burning of my synagogue on Kristallnacht, 1938. And when you survive, after having lost my family members in Auschwitz and Theresien, you ask yourself the question, why did I survive? And what can I do to make sure that never again would man's inhumanity to man manifest itself in such proportion? That's why I'm an addict to interfaith dialogue and interfaith action. Because I do believe we either swim together or we sink together. How do we close the gap how do we avoid a clash of civilizations? And all of us who are here today are saying in one voice, we reject and refute the idea of a clash of civilizations. We know there are differences, and it happened before. How many of you know the story of Noah? An entire generation was destroyed. And then God said, okay, I'm going to make a deal with you. As an expression of my covenant, that there will not be another destruction. You will have the rainbow. Now, have you ever looked at the rainbow? You'll see seven distinct colors. Each color maintaining its own integrity. But in harmony, in harmony, blending and working together. And that's exactly what we have to do. We have to be proud of our faith. We have to be proud of our tradition. We have to transmit that to our children and future generations. 
But we also have to transmit the fact that we have to blend and stand in harmony in order for tikkun olam, for improving a fractured world, which indeed it is.